We now learn another way to do fast modular multiplication. This method is known as Montgomery reduction. Let r and n be two integers that are relatively prime to each other, and r is greater than n. For any integer t, which is greater than or equal to 0 and less than the product of n and r, the Montgomery reduction of t mod n with respect to r is defined as the modular multiplication of t and r inverse mod n, where r inverse is the multiplicative inverse of r mod n, which means r times r inverse equal to 1 mod n. From this definition, we see that the Montgomery reduction is nothing but a modular multiplication and a mod, mod n. The following algorithm actually tells us there are some other ways to compute this quantity. We start with a modular multiplication between t and the negative n inverse, mod r, and we call this value m. Next, we add t and m times n, and the sum will be divided by r. The quotient t will be compared with n. If n is less than or equal to t, n will be subtracted from t, and the final value of t will be report, reported as the Montgomery reduction. Before we show this claim is true, let's see what is interesting in the Montgomery reduction algorithm. The goal of the algorithm is to compute the Montgomery reduction, which is the modular multiplication and the mod n. But in this algorithm, we don't see any modular multiplication and the mod n. What we do see is one modular multiplication and the mod r. This feature actually gives us a way to speed up the modular multiplication, which we'll show later on. Now let's prove this result t is indeed the Montgomery reduction. To prove this is true, we have to show two things. First, t times r must equal to capital T and the mod n. And second, t must be between 0 and n. To see the first equation, we start with the definition of t, and we multiply both sides by capital R. This gives us t times r equal to capital T plus m times n. When we do a mod n operation, the second term disappeared, so the only thing left is t as required. If t is obtained by subtracting n from the original t, we see this equation still holds because it is under the mod n operation. So subtracting or adding an n doesn't change anything. To see the second condition, which tells the range of t, we start with the definition of m. So m is defined as the remainder of t times negative n inverse divided by r, or the mod r operation. From the definition of remainder or mod operation, we know m must be between 0 and r. So if we multiply this inequality by n, we know 0 is less than or equal to m times n, and then less than n times r. This combined with the range, we select the t, so we have the following inequality. t plus m times n must be greater than or equal to 0 and also less than 1 n times r plus another n times r. So in total, less than 2 times n times r. So if we divided this inequality by r, what we get is t plus m times n divided by r will fall into the range of 0 and 2 times n. And this quotient, it is exactly the definition of t. So we know that when t is less than, z less than n, it is what we need. And if t is greater than or equal to n, and following the definition, uh, n will be subtracted from t, again putting the, the value of t into the right range. This completes the proof. It tells us, indeed, the Montgomery reduction algorithm does give us the correct answer for, Mon for Montgomery reduction. When we plug in the definition of m, 
into the equation for t, indeed, we get the Montgomery reduction algorithm's formula, where the reduction is equal to t plus t times negative n inverse mod r times n divided by r. And pay attention here, at the end, we have a mod n operation. And remember, in the procedure, we don't have mod n. So this mod n here is actually a, a shorthanded notation. Remember, when we do this division divided by r, we know that if the quotient is less than n, we don't do anything. If the quotient of t is greater than or equal to n, we subtract the n from t. This is exactly the modular operation. So that is why we use mod n as a shorthanded notation to indicate this condition and its subtraction operation. Next, we'll show how we can use Montgomery reduction to simplify or to speed up the computation of modular multiplication, of modular multiplication. So to apply Montgomery reduction, so let's pick an integer r, which is greater than n and relatively prime to n. And then we compute the following quantities in order. First, we compute n inverse mod n, and then we do the modular multiplication between a and r mod n. And similarly, we do the modular multiplication between b and r mod n. And the last two operations are the Montgomery reductions. First, we compute the Montgomery reduction of a prime times b prime mod n with respect to r. And then this new result, let's call it c prime, we can calculate the Montgomery reduction of c prime. After we do this, we return the value of c and claim this c is indeed the modular multiplication of a times b mod n. And to see this, we start from the definition of c and then plug in the definition of c prime. So what we get is c prime times r inverse equal to a prime times b prime times r inverse times another r inverse. And because this multiplication, they are commutative, so we pair up a prime with one of the r inverse to get a prime times r inverse, which is a following the definition here. And similarly, b prime times r prime gives us b which shows this is indeed the, the modular multiplication. So what we see here is we pick this r satisfies only two conditions. First, r must be greater than n. And second, r and n must be relatively prime to each other. And to, as long as these two conditions are satisfied, we can pick any r we want. So one r happens to be a power of 2. So what we know that in digital computer, the multiplication of r in this case will be a shift of k by, to the left by k bits. And the division by r or the modular r operation will be a shift to the right by k bits. So all these operations will be trivial operations. So that is why if we following the Montgomery reduction algorithm, and pick r as a power of 2. And then this gives us a great potential to optimize the modular exponentiation. So now let's see an example to see how this can be performed. Let's see, we want to compute 68 times 57 modular 109. So in this case, we have a equal to 68, b equals to 57, and n equal to 109. So we pick a, a r, which we want to have a power of 2 and greater than n. So we pick r equal to 128, which is 2 to the power 7. And then we compute n inverse under mod r, which give us 27, uh, 101 here, because 109 times 101 equals to 1 modular 128. And when we put a negative sign here, this becomes 27. So now we compute a prime, which is the modular multiplication between a and r, in this case 68 times 128, 
which is 93. And similarly, B prime will be defined as 57, which is the value of B times R, which is 128, and the result is 102. And next, we compute using the Montgomery reduction formula to compute the, the Montgomery reduction of A prime times B prime. So A prime times B prime, which is the T here, plus the T times negative N inverse, which is 27, mod 128 times N, which is 109, and then divided by R, which is 128. And if we simplify this, we realize the result is 178. However, this is greater than N, which is 109, so we subtract 109 from here, we got the result 69. Next, we do another round of Montgomery reduction of C prime. So what we do is we plug in the value of C prime into the formula here. We got C equal to C prime, which is 69, plus 69 times 27 mod 128 times 101. 109 divided by 128 and this gives us a result of 61 to verify this indeed is the result the correct result so we use the naive straightforward multiplication and the modular so when we multiply 68 and 57 we got 3876 and when we do a mod 109 we got 61 which is exactly the same value here